there's nothing like a good Spider-Man fight scene. As Sony prepares a new wave of Spider-Man films for 2021, let's rank Sony's best fight so far. We know they can do that much, right? Pizza time. Spider-Man Homecoming was a bit controversial among Spider-Man fans when it first came out, while the Amazing Spider-Man franchise wasn't great. It didn't pitch Peter as an Iron Man sidekick. It just turns out that the MCU is just playing the long game, with Peter proving himself as a hero and Avenger over time. Nowhere is this more clear than his first big showdown. At the end of Homecoming, Peter found himself without a superhero mentor or a fancy stark spidery suit. He had to take on the Vulture while riding on the back of an invisible plane. What I love about this fight is that, apparently during filming, Keaton was whispering I'm Batman to Tom Holland. The fight culminated with Peter making the ultimate Spider-Man move by saving his life even when he didn't deserve it. That definitely proves that he was not Iron Man Jr. because we all know that Tony would have let him blow up. Don't believe me? Just ask Ivan Vanko. Oh wait, you can't. Because Tony let him blow up. Spider-Man 3 is finally getting some love from the internet over 10 years later. Now that's mostly because of how meme-worthy Peter Parker's dancing is. I never thought he'd really do that. The other thing from the film that killed the first Spidey franchise that needs some love is Thomas Hayden Church's excellent portrayal of Sandman. The best fight scene in the entire movie came when the new black-suited Spider-Man took Sandman on in the subway station and things got real. The normal quippy, kid-friendly Spidey was replaced with a vengeful, angry vigilante out for vengeance. The most disturbing scene comes when Peter literally pushes Marco's face against the subway, which seems to hurt even though he's made of sand. He then discovers Sandman's weakness to water and exploits it by breaking open a huge water line which seemingly drowns him. Spider-Man caps off this possible slaying with the line, good riddance. Yeah, the dancing Peter bit really made everyone forget that Spidey went full Punisher for a half second there. Not good. If The Amazing Spider-Man 2 would have just focused on the Electro storyline, it probably would have been pretty good. Who knows, we might be waiting for The Amazing Spider-Man 6 to drop this year with Spider-Man taking on Rocket Racer because they've already done all the other villains. The best scene in the film comes when a confused Electro finds himself in Times Square with his newfound powers going haywire. Instead of going straight to the punchy bits, Pete shows his kind side by treating Electro with compassion instead of hostility. Things escalate pretty quickly though, and Peter has to use quick thinking to not only figure out how he can fight Electro, but save everyone from his volatile powers in only a few seconds. If you just watch that scene and forget about the rest of the film's bizarre attempt at Green Goblin, it's not too bad. Hopefully Jamie Foxx gets a better chance when he returns to plague Andrew Garfield one more time. He doesn't even have to look like an off-brand Dr. Manhattan this time around. Spider-Man is mostly known for being a friendly neighborhood superhero. His commitment to the little guy really makes him stand out in a world of heroes who focus on giant, world-ending threats. That being said, it doesn't mean that he can't take on those kinds of threats when the time comes. He proved this in Infinity War, when he finally went full Avenger alongside Iron Man, Doctor Strange, and the Guardians. Thanos still stands as the toughest threat in the MCU. This guy put more of a hurt on Hulk than the reviews of The Incredible Hulk. Still the toughest little hero from Queens more than held his own against the Mad Titan. His quick attacks combined with Doctor Strange's magic portals proved to be a winning combo. Most notably, Peter very nearly ended the entire Thanos conflict by pulling the glove off. If that other Peter had managed to keep his cool for like 10 more seconds, Spidey would have ended the whole thing. I'm just gonna say it. Between Peter's Quill and Parker, Spidey is the number one Peter in the MCU. What could be better than one Spider-Man? How about six Spider-Men? That's the brilliant idea Into the Spider-Verse used to win itself a shiny gold Oscar. Well, that and The Incredibles 2 being really, really forgettable. That premise really culminated in the final big battle, which showed Peter B. Parker, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Ham, Penny Parker, and Spider-Man Noir team up to save the multiverse. They're then joined by Miles, who finally proves that he's a true Spider-Man too, by suiting up right along with the other heroes. What follows is some of the best Spider-Man action ever animated, as we see classic Spidey fighting alongside anime stylings, classic noir sound effects, and Spider-Ham's impressive cartoon fighting style. Where else are you gonna see someone drop an anvil on Scorpion's head, huh? 
Sony has been trying for years to make an all-star Spider-Man movie that sets up the Sinister Six, Miles Morales, Black Cat, Venom, and Silver Sable. They finally accomplished all of that and more in 2018. The only problem, it was in the Marvel's Spider-Man video game for the PS4. The plot all comes to a head when Peter has to face off against his mentor, Otto Octavius, in one final fight with a brand new spider suit that he just finished making. From a video game standpoint, the fight is not particularly difficult or nuanced. From a story perspective, though, it is heartbreaking. You see, this version of Doc Ock has gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs due to a degenerative illness he was hoping to alleviate. His metal arms were in fact tools that he used to cope with his ailing body. Defeating Otto would save New York, but it would also doom Otto to the disease he considered to be his worst nightmare. The level of expression from the two video game characters in the scene literally makes you forget you're watching a cutscene and not one of Sony's best films. The true Willem Dafoe Green Goblin from the original Spider-Man is a true love him or hate him villain. That's not because of anything Mr. Dafoe did, mind you. I would never insult Willem Dafoe like that. That man is an international treasure. No, 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 no. The controversy comes from the costume that makes Spidey's scariest villain look like a reject of Rita Repulsa's army from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The first few scenes with the green meanie were plagued by Matrix-style slow-mo and some CGI that wasn't great even in 2002. There's nothing silly about Green Goblin's last scene in the movie, though. Minutes after attacking Aunt May in a harrowing scene where he interrupts her prayer, he shows the true depths of his depravity. He kidnaps both Mary Jane and a group of school children and drops them both off of a bridge to make Peter choose. Then the two have a brutal showdown in a church that ends with Norman striking himself down with his own glider. The real thing that makes this scene so great, though? The famous moment where the citizens of New York back up Spidey. It may seem corny today, but coming right after 9-11, there was something so perfect about the citizens of New York City standing up behind their hero. Everything Marvel fans wanted before 2016 was the fever dream that one day, Spider-Man would join the Avengers in the MCU. Then Marvel and Sony did the unthinkable by putting Spidey in Captain America Civil War. Not only did we get to see Spidey fight it out with the MCU heroes, but it might be the most charming Tom Holland has ever been in the franchise. His showdowns with Captain America, trading comments about growing up in New York, him geeking out about Winter Soldier's arm, and his magnificent entrance after the words under ruse are all iconic moments for both the MCU and the Spider-Man extended franchise. This all peaked when Spider-Man figured out how to take giant-sized Ant-Man down by invoking the Empire Strikes Back. What could be a better showing for the world's nerdiest superhero than to have him figure out how to take a giant down with a Star Wars reference? Ah, mwah, genius. Spider-Man fight scenes are so great that I did a list ranking the top 10 and someone in the comments is going to complain about one or two I left off. Seriously, I love Batman too, but he's had like, what, three decent fight scenes in 30 years of making movies? It gets intimidating after a while to figure out how to raise the Spider-Man action sequence bar when it's already been raised so many times before. That's why Spider-Man Far From Home did so well by throwing out the rule book entirely with the Mysterio fights. Usually we see Spider-Man leaping around, throwing quips and jabs at his enemies until he figures out how to tangle them in their own unique powers. With Mysterio, that wasn't an option. Instead, Peter had to trust his senses and his wits as he separated illusion from reality with some truly mind-bending visuals. The last of these sequences ended in tragedy as Quentin Beck lost his life but took a piece of Peter's with him. The revelation to the world over Peter's identity is a cliffhanger all of us are still waiting to see how they resolve. Was there any doubt what number one would be? Do I even need to go into all the ways the Spider-Man Doc Ock train fight from Spider-Man 2 was legendary? I could just play you a clip and remind you that this is indeed the best Spider-Man has ever been on the big screen. It has it all. Both Spider-Man and Doc Ock use constantly shifting tactics and split-second moves to outwit each other on the top of a speeding train full of innocent civilians. 
it is a brilliant action sequence that leaves you just as breathless the 20th time you've seen it as it did the first time. I'm so stoked to see how they try to top it when Tobey Maguire and Alfred Molina have their long-awaited rematch in 2021.